All right, we were with our seventh interview this afternoon. Um, this is for the city council election November 7th. I'm sitting here with Brian Duffy. Brian, you served on city council once already, um, and uh, you've been involved for quite a few old, years. Yeah, quite a few years. And Catherine also has been quite involved. Well. What brought you to here initially, initially? We initially came to the Isle of Palms back in uh, 85, I think it was. Uh, my wife got a, uh, an opportunity down at the medical university to start their community health nursing program. And uh, at the time, I, was, I wasn't a trailing spouse. I was a, a, ch a chasing suitor, so to speak. <laughs> okay. And then uh, uh, after about four or five months here, we decided to get, get married. And we've been together now 37 years. And we lived on the island for, for five years. And then she got an opportunity, or four, actually four years. She got an opportunity to uh, go to George Mason University mm -hmm. in uh, Northern Virginia. Uh, to be the associate dean at the College of Nursing there. So I then was the, the trailing spouse. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so she was up at George Mason for how long? Uh, till 2002. She retired in 2002. So when did y'all move back to the Isle of Palms? Uh, I was here in 2000. We bought our lot in, in 1993, I think it was, 1994, mm -hmm. uh, but from the... Uh, Rolling Stones pianist, oh, Chuck really? Lavelle. Yeah, yeah, he owned the lot before us, and we just uh, kind of let it lay fallow until 99 when we started uh, construction. You could probably do that in 97. It'd be a kind of carrying cost doing that today in 2023. Uh, so you, uh, you guys decided to move back here. Yes. And what were you doing besides uh, supporting your wife? Oh, well, my, my employment was as a computer scientist, mm -hmm. systems engineer, project manager. And uh, it was very interesting because I had maintained contacts in the Charleston area. I was uh, the systems engineer for uh, Naval Hospital Charleston for the implementation of the, the medical record system that DOD was deploying worldwide. Gotcha. So I was in and out of Charleston on a monthly basis at least, right. uh, sometimes uh, bi-weekly, because it was all during a project phase of uh, beta site testing. So glitches that were going wrong had to be fixed. Right. Yeah, so. So um, at that point, you guys built, when did you build your house? We, we started, uh, we broke ground in June of 1999 and got the certificate of occupancy in August of 2000. Okay, not too bad. Yeah. And uh, you're still in the same home? Same house. Uh, and so and, and you'd, you'd been here, you'd been in and out. And what year did you run for council the first time? That was uh, 2007 was the election season. Okay. And, and won. Uh, so I had a term from 2008 to 2011. And back then we had there was just the beginning of some neighborhood associations were forming. I remember that the Isle of Palms Neighborhood Association was, was some of the backers behind you and some other candidates. What were the issues back then? Do you remember that was what was it that had people that because I'm sitting here trying to think the marina was the last issue, the short term rentals this issue, but I don't even remember what people were upset about during but, your election. Well, it really is deja vu all over again, but okay. it's not the word short-term rental wasn't used. Okay. It was uh, the McMansions, which mm -hmm. were used as short-term rentals at the time. Right. Because we had, had just had a, a change in uh, in zoning that That's right. moved, uh, moved from... Someone uh, wanted uh, to split a lot. That w I remember that now. Oh, there, that, that, was, that was one issue yeah. that was, that was uh, over on uh, uh, Lollipop Lane, so right. to speak. That uh, was on Heart, Hartnett Boulevard. But the uh, when... The Planning Commission came forward with changes to zoning that increased the size of houses. And I, if I'm not mistaken, we had moved 2,000 square feet higher than any other municipality on the East Coast at that time. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the small, you know. What was the, what was the number they were going to be allowed to build to at that time? It's 7,000 square feet. It's still 7,000. It's five now, isn't it? I, think so. I, I will okay. admit I have not looked at that. Don't quote either one of I, I, I have not looked at that, so right. it's uh, 
Uh, I mean, that's part of, if I win this election, uh, I know I have to get up to date on my uh, uh, zoning ordinances, but which I will. I, I, know, I now know what to look for because I have done the job before. So right. it's, uh, I think I can be up to speed well before the uh, January swearing in. So you were, you, were, you were out of office for a while, you skipped some elections, and now you've decided to jump back in it. And what was the, what was the motivation for you to say, you know what, I think I can help again? What, what? Um, a couple of things. Uh, I think the biggest thing was what I perceived as uh, a negative attitude towards residents by some on council. I mean, it just didn't feel like they were being heard. And I have to say, when I was called a member of a mob at one of the, the council meetings by um, a... Um, Say a sitting a, council member. No, no, it, wasn't, it, it, was, it wasn't a sitting council okay, member good. at the time that I, that I remember. Uh, well, this was in citizens' comments, and it was a, a property manager from Daniel Island that was calling us that. And, you know, that had actually happened in the 2007 uh, time frame also. So that's one thing I don't care for, uh, being called a member of a mob when people are just exercising their right of free speech and the right to be heard for, uh, for their own political interest and their self-interest. And so I saw that and said, that, that had me um, a little upset, you know, uh -huh. felt like a little bit of bullying. And then just had a number of uh, residents really wanting me to, to run again. And uh, eventually I got the, uh, the approval from the boss. Because <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it affects everybody. It does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, and it's a lot of work and it, it affects everybody. Uh, as I've talked to everybody out here, nobody's shy about giving their opinions on these islands, whether you oh, want to hear it or not, right. exactly. whether you're eating dinner or you're walking down the street. You right, know. exactly. So it's, uh, and you know, I'm a little bit older, a little bit wiser, uh, and I think- You have I, the time to do it now I, more. I have the time to do it, and uh, I think I'm a little bit better at it too. I mean, at least at uh, dealing with people and, and understanding where they're coming from, and uh, you know, making sure that they are heard and understood, and you know, and letting them know whether or not something's gonna be, is feasible, because some things aren't feasible, but you know, has to be at least addressed and looked at and discussed. Last time I had talked to you, you were um, just getting back. Where did you guys go? Where did you guys travel to? Didn't you just go on a vacation somewhere? Well, we just got back from Greece uh, the end of, well, about the 16th, 17th of September. Do you want to give up the next four years of traveling like that again? Well, that was a hard trip. Uh, my, my bride came back with COVID. I That's came right. back with, I came back with uh, an upper respiratory infection. So. Uh, maybe travel in the, in the U.S. it might be a little bit easier, and I think it's still, you know, with the way the the technology, I guess the the best thing that COVID had for city council was that they remote. learning how to do it remotely. Because when I was on council, <clears throat> there was no remote access to uh, a council meeting, so right, it, that, and that was a whole lot harder because you had committee meetings two weeks out of the month and then the council meeting so three out of the four weeks a month you were kind of occupied in doing uh, city business well we touched on it briefly and, and there are multiple issues in this election but the overarching issue is short-term rentals it affects a lot of the other issues and it's 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 brought the temperature up on the island higher than I've seen it in the 20 20 years I've been doing this um, one do you think the temperature can go down and two what is your personal stance on the short-term rental? Oh, with regards to the referendum, I'm I'm a hundred percent for it. I, mm -hmm. Actually, I was for a brief period of time during the uh, uh, petition signing period. I was the the president of Preserve IOP now. Mm -hmm. uh, but after we submitted the petition, and once I made the decision to run for council, that was I definitely had to resign that pos mm -hmm. position because wouldn't want any kind of type of conflict right. there and uh, <clears throat> but I think this is this is about protecting the island and protecting the island's future uh, in my announcement 
I pointed out that uh, there are Wall Street firms that have identified short-term rentals as the next great investment opportunity and with even implying guarantees like up to 14 percent potentially mm -hmm. and you know that that's different than mom and pop investor ownership different than people wanting to have a second home and maybe renting it mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks out of the year uh, that's this is completely different this is corporate America and they have what I call stupid money mm -hmm. where they can they can do pretty much what they want with it and when you when you read that these are that's in Forbes and it's New York Times when you when you read these types of statements in those magazines I have to take that as being real mm -hmm. and that they are targeting places like the Isle of Palms I mean there are only a hundred and thirty two barrier islands in the lower 48 states so how many are here in South Carolina? We've got, what, eight, ten? Mm -hmm. uh, and we're the only one that's open, doesn't have a limit on... I believe Seabrook still does too, but they're, they're actually working to try to cap theirs also. Right, right. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it's, to me, that's frightening. You know, you know people talk about this as a campaign of fear. Well, to me, the fear has come from outside. It came from Wall Street. Right. And once I know that they have money that they're thinking about sinking into it, that can change the entire complexion of this island. And we've had, I think we've had some tough times with regards to how do we manage traffic and how do we manage uh, the number of day trippers. Uh, those, those are real issues. And it's kind of funny, I, as I was uh, coming over here and, and passing a, a few of the short-term rentals where... Uh, I've heard it said that oh well they don't they don't add traffic or they don't add cars to the island and you look at a short term rental and you see five or six cars there and half of those cars are getting back out on the road at different times during the day. Mm -hmm. I hate to say this, but they do impact us from traffic, you know, right. at least from that perspective. And we know that the trash and everything else has also increased. So you you you've demonstrated what you're going to do. Your vote. You're going to vote no on the. Um, you're going to vote yes or no on the. Um, on the referendum. On the referendum. Oh, I'm 100% voting yes, okay. and I think anybody that cares about the neighborhoods and cares about the residential nature of the island has to vote yes. There's there's nothing that I mean the the marketing that is going on. I would ask every voter to to consider the source and what does that source have to gain and maybe and this is pure speculation maybe they're already in league with some of these wall street firms i don't know you know but that's always a possibility um besides the short-term rental once like i said is the major issue and you've served before what else do you see as something that you'd like to contribute to and keep an eye on and, and it can help in that's that's facing this council and the next council well, it's kind of interesting. When I went, got on to council the first time, there we had a beach erosion issue, which was up at the east end of the island. Right. And uh, we had to go through the, uh, the machinations of mm -hmm. getting that, uh, that beach uh, restored and, and refurbished. And we didn't have a, a, a beach management plan in place at the time. So. Or a bank. Hmm? Or a bank full of money. Yeah, well, that's true, too. Right. But uh, it was... Now, that, that was what happened then, and today we, we have gone through this a couple of times, <clears throat> and it just doesn't seem like we have uh, the plan in place that allows us to hit trigger points to get things started, to get the ball rolling, to maybe prevent <clears throat> some severe erosion that we, we see that has occurred. And <clears throat> in line with that, it's also, you know, we've got... Um, rising sea level we've got higher tides coming so i am very concerned about the entire island <clears throat> that there's going to be flooding that that occurs on this island in in normal times not and just, not just the, the tides not not just winds, the king right. tides i mean we're, we're getting to the point where we're going to have to we'll end up seeing that and how is uh how are we going to manage that water how are we going to 
you know, keep the island dry. How are we going to divert it? Can we divert it? Uh, I'm right now. I'm currently living through a part of the the drainage project that's being done at uh, at Forest Trail, right, Thirty Sixth Avenue, and uh, a I want to see how that works out, and uh, I haven't looked at the plans in detail, which I probably should. And as a council member, I certainly would, because I think I have a pretty decent systems background and mm -hmm. also understand a little bit about physics. And, you know, water will seek its own level, That's no matter right. what. <laughs> um, Catherine and you, if you're, if you're, if you're, it's a Friday night, Saturday night, what's, what's a good night for you guys on the Isle of Palms? A good night? Yeah. What's, a, what's, a, what's something that you enjoy doing on the Isle of Palms, whether going to dinner or whether just sitting at home in peaceful quiet or walking the beach, turtle it's, teams, what, what, what is it that you guys enjoy what we the most en about the Isle of Palms in terms of, in, you know, physically enjoying it? Our, our personal enjoyment is we have a, um, an upper deck that we go up for sunsets and from... Incredible uh, here. It, they are. It's incredible. Uh, well, you know, uh, I used to, when I first looked at Carol McGill's paintings, I would, I would say, oh yeah. And I, <laughs> and I looked at some of her, her very unique color combinations and say, oh, I'm not sure I like that because I don't see those colors. It could in never nature. happen. Yeah, 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 exactly. I could never see those those then colors you go in out, nature. It's orange and purple. And, and it's like that, Clemson colors right, sometimes. Right, and so all of a sudden, watching the sunsets from our our deck top there, and seeing it, and it's like, oh yeah, because sometimes they're only they're just a split second, and how she was able to capture that in her, in her mind's eye and yeah. put it on a canvas, I just find phenomenal. But that's so that's it. That's that's. That is our favorite thing to truck to go to our upper deck and just sit there, sometimes with a glass of wine, sometimes not, just yeah. to just to catch that that half hour of time, sun setting and then the afterglow. Yeah, that's I'm gonna give you the last couple minutes just to say why it's important that uh, that you get elected and if you have anything that you'd like to say to the voters for the last time, this will come out a couple of days before the election. Um, What's your final statement to these folks? I just want every potential voter to actually go out and vote. Mm. It's, it's your right, and personally, I feel, for myself, it's my obligation. It's your privilege, also. It, it is your privilege, exactly. And this is, if this island is special to you, and you love it, then exercise that privilege to vote and let your opinion be heard. I believe that every opinion is valuable and everybody should have a voice. And of course, from the voter's perspective, I would ask you to weigh the, the voice of the, the property management folks who are about making money on this island and not necessarily concerned about the fabric of the community and the fabric of our neighborhoods. That's, to me, the most important thing. But what I want is the voters to do what's right for themselves. Make that decision for yourself and vote accordingly. And we'll see what happens, what the counts are on November 7th. I, I think it's so important that we have a council that is resident friendly, uh, listens to the needs of the residents. I mean, it doesn't mean that uh, commercial interests are ignored, but what it means is that they don't do not take precedent over the residents. Mm -hmm. You know, because if I believe if the council takes care of the residents and takes care of the neighborhoods, every investor in this island will be happy. Everybody that makes money on this island should be happy. And that's, that's my perspective on things. I think people can make enough money to be happy in what they need. So that's why I think it's very important to stick with uh, resident-friendly candidates. I do not believe that uh, property management is a requirement to be on council. Uh, 
I don't think that being a, a builder is a requirement to be on council. I think being a resident, a neighbor, and a thoughtful, and uh, I would like to say scientific person who believes in data and facts, those are the criteria for being on council. Thank you, brother. Thank you for coming in. I know it's Thanks not easy. You. It's hard <laughs> to park here. <laughs>